I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this video, which is a video pop quiz, if you will, on LAN switching, primarily designed for CSENT and CCNA candidates, but there's some good information and review information for you CCNP candidates as well. As always, we'll go through the questions. If you need to pause the video, feel free to do so and think about a question, but not too long. And by the way, I've taken some of the choices out of this one. I think I've been going a little easy on everybody with the multiple choice. So quite a few short answers here, including the first question. When a frame enters a switch, what is the first value the switch looks at? There are a couple of reasons for this, and I'll mention them when we go over the answer. But right now, I need you to tell me what that answer is. And we move on to the second question. A switch receives a frame with a unicast destination MAC address, but the switch has no entry for that particular MAC address in its MAC table. What is the default action of the switch? You can, name, you can really use one word to describe that. What is that action? Now when a frame comes into a switch port and knows the destination MAC address, which one of these terms best describes how the frame will be transmitted. Will it be unicast, multicast, broadcast, or flooded? When that destination MAC address is known. What value does the switch use to build a dynamic MAC address table? Got to know this one because we're going to see one dynamic MAC table after another in production networks. So what value is being used to build those? Now let's say a frame comes into a switch on port fast ethernet 01. The switch does a lookup on the destination MAC address of the frame and sees that the destination is found off the same port as the source. Which of these actions describes how that frame's going to be handled? Is it going to be filtered, broadcast, unicast, or multicast? What is the destination MAC address of a broadcast? Got to know that one. What is it? Now with port-based security, very common in today's network, so we need to know the basics. And one of the basics is what value does port-based security use to allow or deny access to a switch port? Do we have a password configured on the switch port itself? Do we configure one on the host device, in this case the user's PC or Mac? Do we have a source MAC address we're going to look at or a destination MAC address we're going to look at? Because if we're going to use port-based security, we have to know what value we're using to allow or deny that access. Now also, something else we better know about port-based security, what are the three modes of port-based security? And for extra credit, tell me which one of them is the default. or a gold star. I'll give you extra credit, gold star, whatever you, whatever you need. Now, with number nine here, what is the basic purpose of spanning tree protocol? Obviously, there are a lot of things we can do with it. You learn about a few in your CSENT and CCNA studies, and as you go up the Cisco certification ladder, you're going to learn a lot more purposes for STP. But what is its very basic purpose? If you had to describe it in three words, what would those three words be? And then finally, which of these best describes the order of the transition states of a port running STP? Now we're giving you half of it here because we're obviously starting with blocking and we're ending with forwarding. But what are the middle ones? And even more extra credit, there's a fifth state that is not shown on the whiteboard. What is it? You tend to see this only in Cisco documentation about STP, but we definitely want to mention it. What is it? Now, Let's take a few minutes go over the answers. The first one is the source MAC address. And there are a couple of reasons for this. And one of them, and this is giving you the answer to another question here, one reason is that it's the source MAC address that is actually used to build that dynamic MAC address table. So that's one of the reasons, but it's it's kind of counterintuitive at first, right? Because you think, well, when a packet comes, excuse me, when a frame comes in, it's going to look at the destination MAC address to see how it should be handled. It's definitely going to do that, but the switch is going to look at that source MAC address first. Now, 
when a switch receives a frame with a unicast destination MAC, but the switch doesn't have an entry for that MAC, the default action is to flood the frame. And that means that we're sending it out every port on the switch except the one it came in on. And question three, the destination MAC address is known. And in that case, and assuming a unicast, of course, the destination MAC address is known, that frame is going to be unicast. There's no reason to flood it if the destination MAC address is known. As I mentioned, the switch uses source MAC addresses to build its dynamic MAC address table. Now in this case, with number five, that frame is going to be filtered. And it's a question more in theory these days than in reality, because in most of the networks you work with, if not all of them, the hosts are going to have their own dedicated switch ports. But if a frame does come into a switch port and the destination MAC lookup indicates that the source and destination are found off the same port, that frame is going to be filtered. It's just really a fancy way of saying it's going to be dropped. The destination MAC address of a broadcast is what I call the all F's broad, uh, address. It's FF six times. I'll actually just type that out because keep in mind, let me get you a larger font here. Keep in mind you can see that the grammar checker put a capital F there for me and that's fine because what I want to illustrate is that case does not matter here. Case does not matter. You'll usually see it uh, expressed as all lowercase f's or all uppercase f's, but just in case somebody tries to trick you on it like this, that is the destination MAC address for a broadcast. The case does not matter. Now, on to port-based security. Port-based security actually uses the source MAC address of the frame to make its decision as to whether or not it's going to take the frames in or whether another action is going to be taken. So that's another reason that the switch looks at the source MAC address so early is that that source MAC is actually being used as a kind of password by port-based security. But there is no configured password. We're not going to the switch port and we're not going to the PC and actually set a password manually. The three modes of port-based security are restrict, shutdown, and protect. And the default is shutdown. We're not going to go into all three modes now and what they do. I'll save that for a future video, but it's definitely something you want to know before you take the CCNA exam. The basic purpose of spanning tree protocol, frankly, prevents switching loops. We can do a lot more with it, but that is the basic purpose. We are preventing loops at layer two. It doesn't have anything to do with routing loops. And finally, the order here is blocking, listening, learning, forwarding. And the extra state that I mentioned is disabled. That's officially the fifth STP state, according to Cisco's website. But you will not see disabled as an STP state on a switch. Uh, when you look at one, you'll usually see a three-letter code indicating the port status, and you're not going to see DIS. I want to thank you for taking the time to take this video quiz. I've got a lot more here for you on YouTube and on my website. And I invite you out to the website where I've got over 250 free Cisco tutorials waiting for you. Videos, quizzes, practice exams, fully illustrated tutorials, material for everything from the CSENT all the way through the CCNP. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.